What is it? And why does it matter? That should be two questions that we ask whenever we are thinking about the teachings of the faith, the truths of the faith, and whenever we get to any of these uh, bigger feasts that we celebrate, right? What exactly is it that we are calling to mind, and how does that apply to my life, right? If we can't apply it to our life, we're going to very quickly leave it behind because it doesn't matter to us. And so we need to think about that as we celebrate today this Feast of the Ascension. And so we are celebrating the Ascension. We're celebrating the day whenever Jesus, after 40 days of appearing to his apostles after the resurrection, ascends into heaven, right? Goes back to the Father, body and soul. And so that is what we are celebrating Why does it matter? It matters because this celebration gives us something of a snapshot of the entirety of our life as Christians. And so to be able to see that, we need to think about where we are as we celebrate this day. So as I mentioned, this is 40 days after the resurrection. So technically, we should have celebrated this on Thursday, but that's a whole other story for another day. So 40 days after the resurrection, right? We've had 40 days celebrating the fact that Jesus has risen from the dead. And throughout these 40 days, we've heard in the readings at Mass, we've heard in the, from the scriptures that Jesus appears at various times and various places to his apostles, to his disciples, right? Those who had seen him as he walked the earth. And so they are becoming witnesses to the resurrection, right? They are encountering the risen Lord and becoming witnesses to the fact that he truly is risen and that he is alive. This was one of the criteria that the apostles had to replace Judas. The person that replaced Judas had to be a witness to the resurrection. Because if Jesus didn't truly rise from the dead, then everything that he said doesn't matter. Right? It ends. But if he's risen, then it holds true. And Pope Benedict is huge on this account. He always, always, always talked about how we need to have a personal encounter with Christ, an encounter with the risen Lord. And so Jesus appearing doesn't stop with the apostles, but he appears to us. Right? We are an Easter people, and so we can have and have to have encounters with the risen Lord. We have to become witnesses to the resurrection. That is an essential thing for us as Christians. And so today, the ascension, 40 days after the resurrection, after we've experienced and have encountered Jesus, what does he do for the apostles? Well, he hands on to them a mission. Right? He gives them responsibilities. He is about to ascend, right? so he will no longer be bodily present as they have experienced him through those 40 days. He's not leaving them, he's not abandoning them, but he's not going to be present in the same way. And so he's leaving them a mission to do whenever he does ascend. And we hear about this in our gospel. Right? Jesus, through the, the writing of St. Matthew, tells us, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Now if we're paying attention, and if we're really understanding what we're reading, we should feel very burdened by this command by this commission, by this handing on of responsibilities that Jesus is doing. Right? Because he tells them to go and make disciples of all nations. When the bishop called me a year ago and said, I'm sending you to Church Point. 
That's only 4,500 people. I was still overwhelmed with the responsibility. He's sending 12 apostles to the entire world. The responsibilities that Jesus places on us today at the Ascension, the responsibilities that Jesus places on us any time that we receive a sacrament, are beyond what we can do on our own. When I was ordained a priest, the responsibilities that were placed on me of celebrating the sacraments, of sanctifying the people of God, of counseling, and all the other things that I'm called to do are overwhelming. I cannot do them on my own. When people get married, they are handed on the responsibility of getting their spouse to heaven. And if they have children, they carry on that responsibility of teaching their children in the ways of faith and guiding them to heaven. That's a responsibility that they cannot possibly carry out by themselves. And so Jesus is sort of placing a burden on us that we can't possibly fulfill. He's given us responsibilities that we cannot do on our own. That's the important part of it. We can't do it on our own. But luckily, we are preparing for another feast. We are preparing for the celebration of Pentecost. And so at the Ascension, we're given these responsibilities. At Pentecost, we're given rights, or we're given the ability to be able to live up to the responsibilities that we are taking on. Right? Because at Pentecost, Jesus sends us the Spirit. Jesus sends us the very love that exists between the Father and the Son. And He comes to dwell in us. Right? This always blows my mind. Whenever I baptize and I pour water and say words, that God comes to dwell in the soul. Right? That God came to dwell in each one of us when we were baptized. And he comes to dwell in us in a particular way when we're confirmed for the responsibilities that were given at the Ascension. Right? To carry out this responsibility of going out and making disciples of all the nations. Right? Because we hear in Scripture that the Word of God is living and effective. And so these are not words that were written down 2,000 years ago and that applied to the apostles. And that's it. These are words that apply to us today. And so just as the apostles were given this responsibility to preach the good news, we're given the responsibility to preach the good news. Just as the apostles received the gift of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost to be able to fulfill that mission, we are given the gift of the Spirit at Pentecost. We are given the gift of the Spirit when we're confirmed to go out and to proclaim the good news. And so this keeps going on Today, what did the apostles do during that time between Ascension and Pentecost? Right? That's what we ought to be focusing on today because that is what our Christian life should look like. Right? We receive the Spirit at Pentecost, we receive the Spirit at Confirmation in a very definitive way. But we need to receive it anew all the time. And so just like the apostles who stayed together, who waited in expectation, and who prayed fervently for an outpouring of the Spirit in those nine days between Ascension and Pentecost, that is what we should be doing. In fact, those nine days... That's where we get this word novena. Novena means nine, right? Nine days of praying, asking God for something in particular. And that original novena between the Ascension and Pentecost was a praying for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit so that they would be able to fulfill the mission that they had been given. And so that's what our life as Christians should look like. We should recognize the weight of the burden that has been placed on us to be witnesses of the resurrection. And we should wait 
asking God for a renewed outpouring of His Spirit so that we can fulfill that mission. And so we join together in prayer during these days, asking God for a renewal of His Spirit upon us so that we can be witnesses to His resurrection and so that we can proclaim the good news to all the nations.